no idea when I turned up today that I would be observing the transformation of an SPP into an EY socket. So all my attempts at twittering are now gone out the window because we have the wrong hashtag. Anyway, that's transformation for you. Um, I'm going to talk to you about change. And we often talk about, Gandhi says, you know, be the change you wish to see. I rather like the take on it by Lady Gaga. <laughs> who tells us we want to be the change one sequence at a time. I reckon I want to be the change one child at a time. And today that's what I'm going to talk to you about. I'm surprised and I'm a bit sad that the minister has snuck off because I quite like her to listen to some of the mistakes we make down south so that you can learn from them and actually avoid them if you possibly can. We're good at making mistakes down south, let me tell you. Um, but there we are. And uh, isn't it interesting? There's two things you did nicely for me today. First, you have somebody singing me in Cockney, so I didn't feel too offended in being away from London for 24 hours. Thank you very much for the Cockney contribution. And the second thing is, when I arrived yesterday, there were a load of drunk women in the lift who are all the National Women's Business Awards and stuff, wearing the longest dresses I've ever seen, um, and falling over themselves with champagne in the, uh, in the lift. I also looked to my left as I checked in, and I saw a sign for the Liberal Democrats. And I said to the woman behind the desk, are you for real? Are these people here? And she said, yes, they're coming tomorrow. Yellow, I can say, is not a colour I often wear, so I did look to see, and all I could find was a pair of knickers, so I thought I'd better not put them on. <laughs> but, um, but it gave me a great twittering um, opportunity this morning, which was to tweet, which is going to be the most interesting and beneficial conference, as SPPA, are the Liberal Democrats. <laughs> I leave it with you, you know. Um, so we're here, really, because children matter to all of us. Um, I fundamentally like children, so my job is easy. Um, I'm sad to say that a lot of people work in the sector, I'm not entirely sure I get it. <laughs> so perhaps that's why we're talking about transformation today, but we can make such a difference. I mean, politicians and economic um, uh, economists, although I have to say, um, just as an aside, um, I like the West Wing, and uh, I like old President Barton, if I had a choice, I'd be voting for him. Um, and uh, one of the great quotes about economists was, uh, from them was, uh, astrology was invented to make e economics look viable. And I think that's brilliant to be able to come from these things. Um, I'm sure I'll get shot by somebody. But the, uh, you know, the economics and the James Heckmans and stuff, it's all very great. It's all been helpful for us in lots of ways because it has positioned us as not just making a difference in terms of what we do directly with a small child, but in terms of society as a whole. It has its downside though, guys, because pounds, shillings, and pence actually then are associated with that people begin to think of it then more in terms of you know, an economic um, contribution or formula. So we have to be mighty careful about that. So that's the first thing you have to do. So as you rush headlong into your 600 hours, <coughs> be, a, be warned that you need to get paid the right price for that, for that thing. Um, I think it was Jean who mentioned um, parents-led uh, uh, sector uh, organizations, preschools or nurseries, as I talked to, and it's a big challenge. It most certainly is a big challenge. And so I'm, I'm not saying that it's, it's, um, it's not going to be, a res um, sort of there's a resolution around that. But the point of belief is we don't depend on parent groups. And what we've been doing at the moment is growing really rapidly and taking on nurseries that have been run by parent groups and the parents can't cope anymore. And they haven't got the time, the energy, or the expertise. And we've seen the nurseries go down the pan very quickly when the wrong board isn't in charge. So I'm not suggesting that we take a leaf from office to Scotland, but I would very much like it. And I'd be able to send more time with my lovely friend Anna Sharp if we did. So if you're looking for another way, another segment in that market space, have a look at social enterprise as a model. We currently have 27. By the end of this month, we'll have 28. By 2016, we'll have 50 nurseries. And all of them will be in areas of disadvantage. So, and we take the most two-year-olds from disadvantaged areas. So we call it a program, a two-year-old program in the South. I don't know what you call it up here. But we take 300 of those two-year-olds across our nurseries. So 48% of all our children are subsidized. By me, by the way. The government gives us part subsidization. So, um, and our model is totally sustainable. So I can say what I like, which is great, because I do. Um, and um, again, when it comes to politicians, they're so terrified of me. I'm a bit like Marmite. They let me in quite often. And um, Michael Gove, um, a Scotsman, 
Um, I went to see him. Um, mind you, he didn't know what was going to, he was going to get. Anyway, I turned up with a plate of biscuits the children had been making all morning. And uh, they had washed their hands, guys, well, <laughs> banana biscuits they turned up with. And he, he invited me to tea. And I said to him, well, I know there's no money, money in the country, Minister, so I brought the biscuits. And so he sent all these people running around for a cup, cup of tea. And we had a chat. But now he's been transferred into the chief whip. So as it's sort of tongue-in-cheek, because he's actually quite a funny and charming guy, as you know, if you allow him to talk about education. Um, and, um, and so um, I sent off a packet of walnut whips so with, a, with a letter going, congratulations on your new job, the best with vino to talk to one. Um, so um, I obviously haven't had that much of a reply from him yet. But, um, you know, you have to sort of have a sense of humor in this sector, you know, and don't, get, just don't take yourself too seriously, otherwise you get nowhere and you become just a drone like so many people do. So this is our model, and I'm not going to delay because I know Tam's having a nervous breakdown now, I'm going to run over time, and uh, the chances of that are high. Um, these are the principles that we work in, and Nathan, I'm not going to go into that right now. I'm going to talk to you about, uh, they're very good, let's put it that way, you know, they're all about children. Um, social impact, I want you guys to get serious about social impact. This is our LEAF me method of social impact, and that's about child development. It's not about social impact, it's to do with all the work we do with young apprentices, or about our social mission, or about the fact that we re re um, recruit from the local areas, we bring money into the local areas because we're a social business, I procure from social businesses, I buy who made your pants. How many of you buy from your knickers from who made your pants? You see? You, see, you have to go out there and look at the social business world. Um, they're a bit expensive, though. That's the only thing I keep saying for them. They've got to be very good. Um, anyway, social... Your minister referenced this. The, we know you have to have your children for 15 hours. So whatever you do when you're taking them, you have to have them for 15 hours. Really, we need them for 36 months. In the South, our children are being put sent to school at 2. At 2. I was having a conversation with someone last night who was telling me that they had school uniforms on at 2. We gotta be really serious about this. Do we really like children? Um, so you need them for 36 months. So wherever you are, try and hang on to them for 36 months. We find that really hard. You know, they're in school at three quite often. Now, if this school has got a proper nursery, run by proper nursery people, that's fine. But quite often, that's not going to be the case. I've been at this game for a long time. And, um, and uh, I remember when um, they introduced the nursery vouchers in 1997. 97, 95, actually, it might have been, with John Major. And um, I remember going to schools to advise, and the, the head teachers needing to understand that because there were four, they needed the biggest space, not the smallest space, because they told them as small children, so they'd need the smaller space. So, you know, we've got to now think about two, as I said to, to Michael Wilshaw, who's the head of Ofsted down, down south, I remember having a, a public meeting, I don't care, my hand up, and so he didn't know me, huh? so he said yes to my question, <laughs> never wise. Um, and I said, I want the whole audience to stand like this. And look from your knees down at your fancy shoes. And what you're seeing is a two-year-old. Now imagine you have a nappy and a dummy. That's what we're talking about here. And stick your thumb in your mouth. That is what you're talking about when you're talking about schools. Remember that. It didn't go down too well with him. <laughs> um, I haven't been to dinner with him, let's put it that way. And he certainly hasn't gotten a walnut whip from me. Um, <laughs> and Leaf's quality is all about... Um, you know, what are the, there's such a big debate about what is quality, what does quality look like? We all think we're quality, we all think we're great. And yesterday I was judging at the NMT, uh, Nursery Management of the Day, and it was great because I had this magazine was given to me free, and I'll always take anything that's free. And I opened it, and there I saw Isabel Long getting her award. I thought, hey, he's got the, I, I recognize somebody, that's fantastic. I felt kind of international. Um, and so, um, what, what was really heartening for me though is, as a judge, I was judging the, uh, the individual nursery award. Everybody who came in, you know, every finalist came in, their heart was in such the right place. And I kept thinking of the press and how we're all slagged off all the time as useless, are just one up from hairdressers because we're, you know, nice but dim, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, people would say, well, what you do, what you do, you say, oh, well, I work with children. And uh, they say, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you must be really patient. <laughs> I go, actually, I'm not. I'm a complete cow, but there we are. <laughs> You find yourself also, don't you, when you're, in, in, you're at home and you invite people to dinner or to, to come by and you say, well, the bathroom is there. You know, and you're almost in your macaton, you know, to go to the toilet, you know, and wash your hands. And so, so, you know, there is that. But my hairdresser really challenged me about that one day. And he said, well, who did the hair of the woman who was saying that, you know, we're not good enough to be even hairdressers? I bet I was a bloody hairdresser, June. 
I said, you're absolutely right, Laz, totally, totally, I'm with you. I'll write a blog to support hairdressers and IDRS people. <laughs> so impact is very important about quality and then the home learning environment. Now, the home learning environment in, in the UK is still kind of caught up, no, UK, in the South. It, it's, it's, it's usually caught up as the kind of um, parent engagement. You know, we do a parent evening, we come, we have open days, we're nine to one parents, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, of course we are. They pay our own bloody wages, don't they? You know, you're not going to be really difficult with them. Although you do see some people arriving. Yeah, you're late. Yeah. Well, I have to find you now. You know, this woman is on her knees, you know, she's just, her husband's just left her, you know, she's got 14 children under four, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> and you're standing there going up like that. On the other hand, there are people who are doing their driving lessons and they build the bill and think, well, it's cheaper to have 15 minutes extra on the nursery than actually pay a babysitter. So I know there's the two extensions there. But we really have to develop the home learning environment because we really have to bridge the two. And that's what we're spending all our time at. And I've seen some interesting stuff in Scotland about that. And I think we need to have a big, big voice about what home learning means. Um, I've said about that. I just think we must, be, you know, we must be crazy if we just push our children. Did you see the front of the Independent? Well, if you were staying at the Hilton last night, which I was, thank you so much. And I could see why you were a smiley man when he was doing his accounts. I think he bloody hell, I wish we had reserves like that in the, in the Irish in the, you know. Um, you get a free newspaper and uh, the Independent. Um, and so there, there in the front page was children stressed, young children very stressed at school, you know. And then you open the page and there it is all the same story about it. Again, another good opportunity for Twitter. So we're forgetting about these children. We, now we've discovered their economic, you know, um, part of the economic sort of success of the, of the world. We're pushing them through without them up chimneys. Um, there are two. Oh, we do. In fact, we had them up chimneys this morning. In fact, we'll probably, probably a run, a rerun for the Oliver thing. Oh, that is something thing, uh, Barbara. <laughs> I remember some very fancy investor people coming from the United States and coming to see me. Uh, I'm kind of known as a social entrepreneur in the English South. Um, and then they, they came around one of my nurseries and they said, well, you've never, it is an American nurseries, you'd never know that they were, um, they were poor. I said, oh, give me five minutes, go outside, I'll stick it up the chimney, I'll come back in, and then uh, you can see. <laughs> Clearly the man had never heard of Primark. Oh, you know. <laughs> um, so here we are, this is our job, guys. We have to give our children roots. And we have to give them wings. So our job is to do that, and we have to figure out a way of doing it. Um, I just, I'm just i blessed with very attractive staff and very attractive children, so I don't know why that picture was in, except that it looks nice. <laughs> we have to lead, guys. We have to be leaders. We have to be leaders. And this is our leadership model, and everything we do has to reflect that. So when you're getting paid a pound after the Trussocks, you, you know, this is what you're doing for your pounds, so there's 10p on each of these things. You're leading pedagogy, you're leading learning, you're leading yourself, which is why you're here today, apart from the fact that you wanted me to meet Clay, I know. Um, <laughs> you want to engage with parents, you're leading in the community, and you're managing and leading a service. This is some job for those of us who can't, can't even be hairdressers. I mean, you know, really. So we have to lead an action. What does that need to look like? We need to be credible. Can't do stuff unless we know what we're about. You have to know yourself. You really do. We have to remain child centered. Fundamentally, we need to see the world from the child's perspective and then figure it out around them, not the other way around. Whatever happened to child development? It's been lost. It's been completely lost. I am trying to appoint staff and they know nothing. Nobody's ever heard of Mary Sheridan. Do you remember Mary Sheridan? You know, when you're three months, when you're six months, when you're eight months, when you're ten months. Well, it gave you a framework. I mean, it might be perfect, but it was better than what we get now, which is roughly, you know, a thing in the air going, yeah, maybe. Hmm. Interesting. It's interesting when you're assessing the two-year-olds with disadvantage, because now they're all going to be called to have language delays, and they're all going to be told they've got some kind of delay, because you don't know what's the norm for a two-year-old, which, of course, is the period in which, which most development happens. So you need to be pretty skilled to understand that. So I'd say reclaim child development. We need to operate strategically and think carefully. And do we have time to think carefully? Quite often we don't. And we, get, have, we have what they call the amygdala hijack, where our brain is overtaken by our emotions and we don't actually act. Oh, we do the whole ostrich thing. Oh, we cry all night. Oh, we drink all night. And we wake up in the middle of the night writing things on post-its. You know that? I do that frequently. We need to create happy 
learning teams and atmospheres. And people think this is an easy thing to do. Oh yeah, happy team. When you've got something in the morning, you know, with the boyfriend issues, a face that's, you know, that, that far down, and you say, I think you should leave that at the door. And she just goes, yeah, right. You know, and you're in the room sort of following them around, saying, you know, smile, it's a good idea. It's all about culture. Um, you know, um, implement high standards consistently. That's really hard. Any of you who've been inspected know consistent and robust. It's really tough. You know, how many times have you do something basic? How many of you have got the basket on top of one of your shelves with bits, bits of puzzle in it? And one of those dreadful compare bear things, you know, that you've <laughs> dropped. You know, all those kind of things. And that's because you've told them to tidy up. What bit of tidy up did they not get? You know, why does it take a week? Why is this a mountain and then it's called, you know, in, in, uh, sort of an exciting bag or a, a wonder box or something because you haven't found things? How many, t how many times do you stand there saying, what bit of this did you not get? So con consistent and robust is pretty, you know, difficult. We need to support parents. We need you to use good judgment. And that's easier said than done as well. We try and use good judgment. We really, 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 really do. But when your friend heard for the 58th time that you want to get rid of this member of staff because she's really better in Tesco, and, and you have to do performance management, and you wonder about your own judgment at this point, you kind of, you know, you think, I've got to do this, I've got to do this, I'm going to be sick, but I've got to do this. And your HR advice says, keep notes, keep notes. You know, you've got no idea. You keep notes, keep notes, keep notes. You have you any idea what it's like in this place? I've got four staff sick, five staff pregnant, you know, and, and what am I supposed to do? Keep notes. And of course, they're all pregnant at the same time, in the same nursery. People laugh about that chair. I always think there's something in it. <laughs> you need to share your leadership, which presumably is why you're here today to talk to each other. And I'm certainly prepared to share it with you and you need to know your community. Those of you who are going to take the two-year-olds, the one thing you really need to understand is you need to know where those children come from. You need to understand that. You cannot understand what a two-year-old feels like unless you know where they're coming from. You know, and so there's no point telling people to go off and read the library book if you know, they're on the 17th floor of some terrible block. They've got four children. They don't really read very well themselves anyway. And all you do is add another notch to their self confidence that says, I'm a failed parent. So we really have to think about some of this stuff. I like to have the spiral curriculum. No, I'm just, I'm not going to print all this down here. Um, look at this brilliant quote from uh, Kofi Annan, who I know you read on a regular basis. Um, Literacy unlocks the door to learning throughout life. It's essential to development and health and opens the way for democratic participation and active citizenship. Can you imagine when you want to eat one of the babies in the baby room, or you're playing on the floor with the toddlers, that you're talking in the same thing as democratic participation? But if we don't support our children to be able to talk and to think, to feel part of their environment, to grow up with a sense of ambition, they're not going to do any of this. So when somebody asks you what you do, and you say, I'm just the nursing nurse, forget the just nursing nurse business. You are leading social justice. You're not just anything. You are for social justice. That's what you're doing every time you get engaged with small children. Play. The minister mentioned play. You know, let me be rude about politicians for just two seconds. But the worry about politicians is when they start saying it, everyone else's eyes glaze over and their ears close. And that's a bit scary. Now, we did have a minister down, down south who's now, thank God, gone to environment. God love the badgers, but never mind. They're better the badgers than the children, that's what I'd say. Who just couldn't get this play thing, couldn't get it at all, so wants to take it out of everything. You know, as far as she was concerned, it's all about teaching. Um, she clearly never read her Froebel, but look, Froebel was saying this back in the day. It's not trivial, it's highly serious. Now let me take you back to the days when we were trained, and do you remember the days of parallel play? Do you remember that? Cooperative play, imaginative play, ludic play. What the hell is that happened to all of that? So we need to reclaim play, but not just play as our oh, children lantern fly, but actually play meaning a significant, complicated, deeply felt philosophy. And we need to be able to articulate that to people and articulate that to our parents and actually give those children some space to be able to play and play on grass and play on all sorts of things. And you guys have to play because if you're not playing, they can't play either because you're all so uptight. 
and so worried about your false nails and your shella, you know, feet that you can't actually see the age. <laughs> By the way, I banned all of that. Big earrings, shella, anything that gets in the way of play, I banned. <laughs> so I banned opportunities that don't allow you not to play. Why? Let's just focus on the yellow here for a minute. Because children are need to be active, sensory, real, hands-on experience. I think we have all, everything has, there's fresh vegetables all over the place, in the role play area, wherever they want to use it. None of them have choked to death, by the way, at all. And the world hasn't stopped being hungry because I have a few cabbages in our role play area. So when you get on your high horse and say, oh, but what about real food and the children, you know, it's only a moral issue. It's not that much of a moral issue because otherwise Tesco would be throwing it out down the back anyway because it's out of date. It's not really, guys, get real here. No child can learn about real things if they have a plastic thing in their hand. They can't. Scaffold their ideas are, you know, into manageable steps. They love things when they're all, you know, they're all kind of broken up in kind of crazy ways. So, so you need to be able to understand the stages by which they get to that particular learning outcome. And a logical and effective questioning. Alice the other day was reminding us all about the 10 second rule. Actually, and when she counted the 10 seconds, that's hard. So, you, you know, you ask the question. You don't ask that awful question, which is, oh, Johnny, what a lovely painting you've just done for us. Oh, it's lovely. Now, how many spots are on that? <laughs> At which point he's cutting his wrists, isn't he? <laughs> and then you're giving him 10 seconds to do it. Okay? <laughs> so think about these things when we're considering what is going to change the world. Look, this is a big slide I'm up with. <laughs> <laughs> this is my thing. You can all read. You don't need. Well, I hope so. You know, because we are teaching the next generation. If you can't, I'm sure Jean will come up with a plan. Um, Jane Britton said, "Reading and writing float on a sea of talk." Guys, we need to talk to our children. Talk to them, not not. It's time to go to the toilet, or are we going to do this, or, you know, talk to them. When is the last time they sat on your lap? Oh, my God, and sat on your lap, <laughs> you know, on a chair, which in my nursery would be a leather sofa, so you, because I can't stand ch stains and the chintz, I'm like Ikea, or Ikea, um, you know, you chop out the chintz, because otherwise you have an awful bloody blanket thrown over things, covering all the stains, haven't you? How messy is that? So I, 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 um, I like to use leather because it's easier to clean. Yes. It's probably not leather, really. It's plasticky leather, but it looks, <laughs> it looks quite smart with a few nice cushions that can be you know, changed over and over again. We need to get talking right. We have a thing at least. Two words together at two, a thousand words at three, fluent at four. That is our baseline. And I am not letting any of my children leave Leaf Nursery with the ambition to read the sun. They are all FT readers. <laughs> they are the future economists, apart from anything else. We have too low ambitions sometimes for our children, especially our children who are disadvantaged. The fact that we call them disadvantaged in the first days is, is pretty much damning. Okay, so you live up there. I lived in a place like that, and it really damaged my confidence for a long time, and I never wanted to say where I lived, you know. And I'm not, I, I never want any child to feel like that. We need conversations, and as I say to my staff, if you don't know long words, learn long words. Now, you have a better education system up here, so you should have loads of long words. <laughs> Down south, we have a little bit of a problem. But, you know, we are learning words. We are teaching words like catastrophe. No boys love catastrophe in the nursery. You know, serendipity. Got you. <laughs> yes, um, you know, what wonderful little words that children like spillage. It's one of the favorite words of the children. Spillage, 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 spillage. You know, mother's saying, why are they talking about spillages? And they are, oh, it's just, it's, it's just a, you know, it's a pedagogical concept. <laughs> <laughs> Stories and poetry. I don't know where I learned Ali Bali because I never learned it. Because I was in Cork and we weren't singing about Ali Bali there, so I couldn't ask that question. Um, music and singing, and action and traditional songs, and ring games, they've all gone out. These were, they are there for the last 50,000 years for the point of the fact that, that they are solid in terms of supporting children's language. Rep repetition, alliteration, rhythm and rhyme, and they can be long. I know there was a princess long ago, can go on and on and on and on and on, but you know, you can do your own version. 
Helicopter drama, that's the work of Gus and Paley. I love the work of Gus and Paley. It's where you have the blue mats, as we call them, where the children set things up. Don't show me that. Um, and they set this up and, you know, the children do more than circle time, where they, you know, it's once upon a time, or I went, you start with a story. Now, you know, all children will go, uh, you know, um, once upon a time, I went on my holidays, oh, I went on my holidays, oh, 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 oh. yeah, well, helicopter helps you to move that on a little bit. And so I went on my, um, I went on my um, holidays. And so you might then insert something like, where did you go? I went on my holidays to Scotland. And so it goes on, you know, and then you actually find the quiet children come out. There's no resources. It's cheap. It doesn't cost anything. You sit on the floor, the children record it, and then you have it on one page. One page. And that is a really, and parents can't believe that. What, they're writing their own stories. Yes, they are. They are the future writers. Dialogical reading, which we haven't got time because this presentation is about general things rather than about detail, but that's the kind of, how do you teach people to read, to read and to support reading? So you move from that, okay, children, come and sit down. We're going to have a story now. Nathan, Nathan. You know, you know the time, don't you? Yeah, Lewis, 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 if you, if you don't listen, you have to sit by me. Sit by me. You know that carries on. There's about 4,000 of the children because everyone else is running around tidying up. Yeah, and then, yeah, it's all the time. Who wrote that book? Julia Donaldson. Yeah, she's the narrator. You know, you know you're dead by the time it happens. Yeah. So, dialogue really helps you to rethink some of that sort of stuff. It's a really kind of back to basis concept here because actually that's what matters with children. <coughs> Curiosity, discovery. This is again Alice Sharp. She's like my mentor, she is. Um, children led planning. Our children need the planning. They've been leading the planning for about eight years now. It's a much more effective way because it builds on their interest. It does not mean you don't extend it, it does not mean you differentiate it, but it does give them a sense of engagement. And the better they get at it, the more effective it is. And we do exit interviews with our children because I always like to know what really matters with the children. And then I analyze it every, about every six months. And what you find is, what things really matter to children? They need friends, they miss you quite often, you know, they name staff which shames the rest of them. I'm really going to miss morning. Yeah, well, you were, we were rubbish, so, you know. So, and that's really important. The leaf, leaf environment, I'm obsessive, guys. People do not need clutter, okay? Just dump the clutter. They don't need murals, as they call them in London, you know, of Disney characters painted on the wall by some local corporate company who thinks they're doing you a favor when they come in, because you're poor and they're rich, and say, I said that to Barclays, I'm poor, you're rich, give me money. I don't want you mispainting on my walls that I have to paint white all over when you're gone. Uh, a couple of other things I'll just pick up. The Hessian, I got that from Scotland, that's a great idea. Um, and all our boards now are Hessian, so I don't have all that business tearing, you know, the, uh, the obsession with the uh, sticking um, and all that kind of thing. Did you give up some of the tables? Did you stop with the tables? They don't need tables everywhere, it's all right. You know, buy some of those things from B&Q, they're much cheaper than community play things. Um, <coughs> have you let the sofa and change your cushions? Go to Primark, there's fantastic things in there. Wash them, I hope you've got a good system. How many times do you go into a nursery and it feels grubby? Yeah. Ah, you know, and don't get all kind of, oh, it's a cleaner's job. No, 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 our duty is to the children. Our children should be in a clean environment, a clean, uncluttered, calm, beautiful environment. Doesn't matter where it is. Dens, I'm just gonna pick out a few things here, dens. Dens are not the site of paedophiles. It's all right. <laughs> Children are stuck with us from eight to six quite often. They want somewhere to escape the listening. Have you got your listening ears, children? Can we do some nice waiting? You know, they're two years old, some of them. Does it feel natural as a two-year-old to spend your whole, would you like to spend your whole day being told to listen, to sit down, to wait, to be kind? Oh, that was so kind, you got him a tissue. Yes, because I want to stuff it up his face. <laughs> <laughs> so, dens are really good places. And if your inspections come in and go panicking about these things, ex explain to them that they are well supervised, they are open, you know, you know what's going on, but they're actually just under a towel. <laughs> and, if you can, I don't, I know, well, I don't know whether this is another subliminal message this morning about, you know, these children starving to death up here with their bones, um, and then the ball of fruit being taken and then taken away again. They didn't get a banana, did they? She came in, she showed this beautiful plate of food, and then she disappeared again. I'm thinking, oh no, those poor children. 
So I'm quite keen on that. And if I was to pick two things, I'll have a mug kitchen. Costs you nothing. It's a laugh. Children get dirty. It's fabulous. Um, if you can't, if you can't have a fire pit, they don't burn to death. Children know the rules. Have harmonious relationships. That's the other thing. Harmonious relationships are really important. Get to like your staff as much as you can. Get rid of them if you can't help. <laughs> Be tuned in with your children. We talked about child development, positive relationships, scaffold their learning. Have fun, for God's sake. We're at the best job in the world. We're in the one place we get paid to have a laugh. Children are hysterical. Um, create, get, become, and become a great conversationalist. Start, talk, start talking. And don't start to do that thing like, oh, you know, uh, Stanley's really into dinosaurs. And you go, yeah, it's massive. Where are they? Dinosaurs. And then you go, well, I, and then I wait for the next thing, which is, yes, what kind of dinosaurs? Well, are they herbivores? Are they carnivores? Are they big dinosaurs? Are they small dinosaurs? What kind of dinosaurs are they? They're not all called dinosaurs, you know. So get to know yourself, get to, and find reasons to have good conversations with children. You have to initiate as much as them. I can't have time for this, I'm sorry about this. Um, <laughs> children need to be safe, fit, and healthy, and that's, you know, this is real stuff. They don't all choke. We, we, one day, um, we didn't know what to, uh, we had a day called We Don't Know What to Do with the Parsnip Day. Parsnips are a misunderstood vegetable, you understand that? <laughs> and nobody knew what, quite what to do with them. So we put the parsnips in, and the whole day was spent on parsnips. Now, we got a bag of parsnips from Tesco for a pound, so I'm sure you probably get them cheaper up here. Um, so, yes, because you would have more littles and stuff, won't you? Um, and so, therefore, put the parsnips out. We glued them, we stuffed them, we made them, we ate them, we sucked them, we did all sorts of things. At the end, nobody didn't know what to do with a parsnip. These are the kind of things that have serious fun, you know, and the parents are really into as well, because they didn't know what to do with parsnips either. So we moved beyond curried parsnip soup. Finally, on their home um, learning, the, the, the thing I'm trying to develop is the pedagogical conversation. So really what we're trying to do is, we don't have money for all these programs and stuff, but we have a bag of knowledge inside ourselves. So when the parents come in the evening, you'll say, he had two dirty nappies, and he ate all his broccoli, and he played with his friends, and he got muddy, and we know we had a lovely day, we went down to the shops today. We need to close that loop, guys, with the pedagogy. What is it that they learned, and what do we need them to do at home that will extend that learning? So you could add it to anything. So you can, my story is, uh, I spoke to this mom. I said, Tallulah loves fish. Mom did, oh my god, I'm having fish in my house, can't stand it, you know that. Um, I, have to I, have to, I have to speed this story up. Um, anyway, we got to the end of the story, and I said to her, no, just go to Asda, go to the fishmonger, and just get the fishmonger to show you a tilapia. Now, why did I say tilapia? It's a lovely long word. Doesn't it sound nice? Isn't it better than cod? <laughs> <laughs> and then I said to the mom, at an item, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do all under the sea stuff, because we want Tallulah to be a marine biologist. This mom never heard of a marine biologist. I kept thinking of Jack Cousteau. Um, and so it, it was this whole thing about giving her an opportunity that she's part of developing the child into something much bigger, much greater, much more important. And we, talk, we can't talk about this now. Multi-generational is really important. All our nurses are involved with people from different ages, stages, age, you know, they go to places, they have weekly uh, drop-ins. It's all about loneliness. Loneliness is the biggest, the biggest issue for us in, in, in London particularly. Only 18% of children have access to an extended family in London. In Scotland, the, the, the stats are much different. But, you know, that is a very lonely, lonely place to be. And we also take teens and toddlers. So it's not just about older people. We also will take our apprentices and our teens and toddlers, which are identified by in schools as people who are potentially going to be uh, uh, sort of teenage parents. They come into nursery for six weeks to put them off. <laughs> <laughs> they become our apprentices quite often. <laughs> If you're short of food, I always suggest Sainsbury's um, because these children went for the day. Look at them. Look, are they happy? You see how happy those Sainsbury's staff are? They took them in. They did the baking. They showed what baking looked like, how they made the bread. They gave us the bread free for the day. The parents couldn't believe it. The children's hats are from those cut shoe cupboards because we didn't have a hat to cover them. <laughs> and there you are. So there's lifelong learning because we want an inquiry as a way of life, which is why you're here today. And in to conclude, I say to you, listen, we have to listen to the children. We have to listen to ourselves. We have to listen to what's going on. We have to get off our high horses. We're not here for ourselves. We're here for the children. And we have to have fun. So today is a great day to ignite your spark. Have fun. Sing. Do what you like. And if you want to follow what I do, 
read my blog, connect with me. I'm very happy to have anything like that. And you'll find that my blog sounds a bit like me now. So, you know, <laughs> you know I know what to expect. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you.